Hey everyone, welcome to the inaugural episode of the Ambassador Club podcast. So the Ambassador Club exists to be a social club and a resource for top refers of our partner publications. And I couldn't be more pleased to have Nick Peterson with me here today. Most of the partner publications are associated with Substack publications that Nick got started. So we're going to just jam a little bit on this first episode to talk a little bit about what the Ambassador Club is, who it's for, why it exists, and where it might be going. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Nick, if you don't mind just providing a quick introduction of yourself. Sure. The the easiest way to figure out kind of who I am and what I do is just grab my book. It's short and it, it kind of lays the foundation. If you read the book, you're going to be like, yeah, this is my kind of person or no, it's not. And either way, it's totally cool. You can grab it on Amazon for super cheap or for free at freebumpersbook.com. So you just grab a copy. So I would, I would go that route to kind of figure out who I am and what I do in my disposition. But we, we do have a number of publications and the publications are unique like each is unique and so commandment one is is fitness and it's got some unique personalities and garden academy is is more me than the other ones uh man bites dog is is focused heavily on marketing and advertising and it's got a little of the laurel portier kick you know uh so i have a lot of partners and what i do is i i like to identify people that have shared operating systems they often come from different industries, different backgrounds. They use different language that most of the time they have no idea that they share an operating system because they do. They use different language. It They're in different industries, so it manifests differently. And bring them together, which is what all our publications are. So Scott and I were talking, uh, you and I were talking, and I believe, and I got this from Dr. Jeff Spencer, that a system can only reach its full potential if you focus on the harmony between the parts, not making each part as good as it can be, but designing each part so that it plays well with the other parts. And those are very different things. So when I was thinking about, okay, what what would be really beneficial and fun and helpful? It would be this ambassador program for people that either can't afford to upgrade, don't want to upgrade, or they do upgrade, but they still just want a, another kind of component of this whole thing. And uh, so the ambassador programs, like you refer people and you get cool stuff. But we got a bunch of different publications. And so when I was thinking through from a resource allocation standpoint and a collective momentum standpoint, we have this group of people, even if they don't know yet, they share values and operating systems. Do we really want to make five or six different communities, right? Segment them, segment their attention, separate them, make them choose where they're spending their time. Or could we get all of these publications to collaborate and send all their kind of ambassadors to one place? And what that does, which is the ambassador club, it allows for more collective momentum. It allows more cross domain, like pollination, Right. If it was like, here's the marketing ambassadors and then here's the fitness ambassadors, they'll never realize how much they can help each other. So if we put it in one place, then a lot more magic can happen. And then, of course, you have Man Bites Dog, TGA, Creative On Purpose, all these publications that want to reward their, their biggest fans. So by becoming an ambassador of one, you could get all the rewards for just one, but with the ambassador club, if you become an ambassador for one of those publications, you get all of the rewards from all the publications. So it's it's just a, uh, it's a better product. Now the downside is there's no one brand that's going to get all of the, you know, all the love and that's okay. Cause we're, I'm, I'm less about the brand and more about the people that make up the brand. So that's the ambassador club. It's saying, Hey, here's, and we may add publications where we say, Hey, you are like us. Do you want to add an ambassador program and throw your people in our community? And here's the deal. Your referrers will get all of our benefits, but you got to throw benefits into for all of our referrers. And that's the, the ambassador club. Well, I love that you wove Dr. Jeff in because part of, I think, the philosophy and the principles behind this endeavor is his idea that no one wins alone. And it's really, it, it, and showing up fully and for your teammates is really important. It's it's how you achieve preeminence and mastery in your own domain is, is by making sure that you are lifting up 
those around you. It just, it helps, helps everyone, but it, it helps you as well. So I love that part of it. One of the reasons why I started my Substack Creative on Purpose in the first place is when I watched you launch your personal Substack, Nick Peterson, what I was paying attention to what I thought were your leverage points. Like, why is he jumping into this type of platform? And one of the things that you explained to me early on is the power of the network effect, but how Substack really leverages and amplifies that. And so it seems like the Ambassador Club exists in part to be a catalyst and an ampl amplifier for something that Substack is already kind of optimized for. Is that fair? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Substack has uh, incredible network effects right now. And it's less, for those of you interested, th th there's other networks that have, or platforms that have network effects, kind of. But, and this could change, but right now Substack is, it's not algorithmic. And it's, they've built in really easy ways for you to share stuff that you like, you know, through the recommendation tab and all that. So, so it's a very organic, it's more organic than like a trying to engineer the YouTube algorithm or the Facebook algorithm. And at this point in time, there is no pay to play. So it, I mean, technically it's entirely organic. So what happens is you're more likely with, if you go viral on Instagram, 99% of those views are not going to be your kind of people. They're just views. And they're just viewing it because everybody else viewed it. It's Substack, the way it's built, it's exponentially, it's it's more likely, it's a much higher probability that the people that stumble upon your stuff are your kind of people. And that's really what we want is we want more of our kind of people. So the the ambassador club is saying, hey, all of you people, you've brought us people that are our kind of people. And now we want to, reward you and pay it back and do cool stuff for you because the evidence suggests that you will bring people in because you have. Well, and I love that you referenced our kind of people because that whole idea of, you know, I, I need to find more of my MKPs, my kind of people. I want to surround myself with my kind of people. And I've heard you speak to this, but I, I heard it first from Seth Godin. I don't know what the origin of the phrase is, but when you are trying to either establish a culture or find uh, the culture that you want to participate in or derive identity and, and belonging and meaning from. You're looking for people like us who do things like this. And those two ideas also are really deeply woven into this whole idea of the ambassadors club, like people that are generous, that are not afraid to share what they like and share what they find value in or find insight and inspiration in, this becomes a, a point, a gathering point where all those people can share experiences, knowledge, tools and tactics, but everything is deeply rooted in philosophy and principles. And the biggest one being this idea of generosity and generosity in a way that's kind of mutually beneficial. Yeah. And there's just people that are wired and it's not, there's, there's no morality. I don't consider it good or bad or there, there's just people that are wired. They're, they're kind of uh guy, even I think it's Seth Godin uh, will tell you there's people that are oriented towards affiliation and there's people that are orient, oriented more towards dominion. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're oriented toward affiliation when your first thought is like, who can I share this with? And, and what can we do together? Uh, and, and that's really the people that this ambassador club is built for. And if that's not you, that's totally cool. But the, this space is for those that, uh, you know, our motto at the Guardian Academy is live to learn, give to earn. And some people are just naturally wired to discover something cool and they just want to share it. And that's the kind of people that I think we're we're building for. Yeah, for sure. Affiliation is such a, such a powerful concept and and so much more powerful than simply striving for authority building and trying to get attention through authority building exclusively uh, uh, one of the things that i took away early on from the content of yours that i first started to to look at which was nick smith's replays this idea of force multipliers and it made me think a lot about okay so if force multipliers are points of leverage that help you do what you do more effectively, more efficiently, 
what are the biggest force multipliers that I already have? Like, instead of trying to create a new force multiplier, like what do I already possess that provides leverage that I'm underutilizing or could could lean into a little bit harder? And for me, it was relationship. I have a network of extraordinary human beings at my disposal. I have permission uh, to talk to them and they, you know, we, we have the, that mutual trust and so forth. And so just interested in number one, in your reflections, because I think this ties into our discussion around the network effect, but what are your thoughts around relationships as force multipliers and how can we be a little bit more intentional and leverage those with a little bit more integrity to create the impact or to influence the results that we want to get mm -hmm. well counterintuitively i think uh have you ever met or i'm sure there's people in your life uh and i can name a few in mine where it's like man if they ever came and asked for something no question about it i drop whatever i'm doing and i do it because we, we, you just observe and they just give and they never ask for anything and so what they have is they have leverage and it's not because they tried to get leverage. It's because they're great humans. They're good friends. They help people when they can uh, without worrying about what's, you know, what, what am I going to get out of it? And so I think uh, relationships are, are the ultimate force multiplier when they are non-transactional. Once they become transactional, once it's like, hey, once you're bartering with somebody or or making a deal with somebody then it has to make sense economically so it's not, it's not really a force multiplier it's just a transaction and it might be a it could be a transaction where both people win but it's not a force multiplier in the sense that it a force multiplier improves everything you do or a lot of the things that you do or what you're already doing so uh, if i'm trying to do something you know something significant the more relationships I have of people that are, are willing to go the extra mile for me, the bigger advantage I have. It doesn't matter what that thing is. So I think relationships are a force multiplier if they are relationships. A lot of people use this, oh, this is my community. I got 7,000 members and we're family. It's like, you're just saying words to try to get something that you don't deserve. Because they're not family. You're not going to treat every all 7,000 of them. Like if they get sick and they're in a hospital, you're not going to fly to each one of them. I'm sure there's somebody that you will in your actual family. Probably don't send them Christmas cards. Probably don't get them gifts. Like they're not family. And that's okay. I, I totally understand why you would use that from a marketing perspective. But relationships are similar. People are like, I care about relationships. And then from, from the outside in, you can be like, no, you don't. You care about transactions. You call them relationships because you think it's going to give you an advantage when you're having the conversation. So I do think relationships are a force multiplier if they are actually relationships. Yeah. Reminds me a little bit of a, there's a local business that has a commercial where they end with, come on in, we'll treat you like family, maybe better. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, but what you just said brings to mind, so often we have this expectation or result that we're chasing and often in my experience, it's tied to revenue. If I get, if I, if I, and so that idea that we think that if we have a clear revenue goal or some sort of transactional expectation in mind, then we can reverse engineer or engineer to get that result. Where if instead we pay attention to what really matters, which is the affiliation and the, the protection of trust and maintaining the permission that people give us with their time, attention, and so forth. Those things that we normally think of as ends in and of themselves become just naturally occurring results or side effects of paying attention to the things that actually matter, which is the integrity of your intentions and aspirations and affiliations. Yeah, and I, I think there's a, there's a thing about revenue that I'm just going to touch on really quick is you got a revenue goal and the human brain wants so badly for everything to happen in the straight line, uh, which is why it wants really linear progress, which is a detriment uh, because 
a force multiplier, what does it do? It multiplies. Okay. Multiplication is nonlinear. Right. So if you go two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two, you get a nice straight line. And that's how people sometimes think about revenue. Okay. Well, I want this much money by this time. And so they're playing an additive game. But if you go two times two times two times two times two, you get this hockey stick. It's not a straight line. Right. So you realize that's the trade off is if you're like, okay, but I got to make money today. I, we, I was just, we were on a call with somebody uh, on the, the mini arena and they were like, yeah, what are the shortcuts? to do more collaborations because collaborations take time and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in a rush. It's like, well, nobody wants to hear this, but the shortcut would have been to spend the last 10 years building relationships and you'd collaborate like that. It's not hard to pull together a collaboration, but so now when you reach out to people, you say, Hey, let's collaborate. And, and you turn it into a financial transaction because you're in a rush, you've turned it into, it's not going to have the hockey stick exponential growth. It, you might still put in time and that might be worth it. That's transact. That's totally cool, but you're not going to get, it's not a force multiplier. It's additive. You're, you're doing more time and hopes to get some amount of money for that time. And so I think that's the thing to realize with revenue and relationships, all this stuff is the sooner you need a return on it, the lower the ceiling is on the potential for it. And the sooner you need a return on it, that's an exploit play. And that's okay. But the sooner you need a return on it, the less options and opportunities you're going to have later. As soon as you decide what the transaction is, you're not going to get a better one later. So yeah, I'm a big fan of relationship. I'm a big fan of trying to kick. And this is really hard because we all have cash flow issues from time to time. And when it's not coming in, your brain starts to wonder, is it ever going to come? The thing about the straight line is it allows our brains to extrapolate it out and make the mistake of thinking it's going to continue forever. So we get tricked all the time. And this isn't a, a episode about revenue, but I think it highlights really well why people struggle so much to create good relationships in business. They might have great relationships somewhere else in their life because they never thought that they could transact. Uh, but I know people that have great relationships in, in their everyday life and they can't replicate it in business because... They're thinking about business. They're not thinking about other humans. Mm. And the ambassador club and hopefully the business is built around it are really more focused on the other humans with the understanding and the trust that the rest will kind of follow. Yeah. Reminds me of the Zig Ziglar quote, you can get everything you want in life if you help enough people get what they want in life. Just that idea, the compounding effect of generosity. And one of the, the things that leapt out to me when you first approached me with this invitation to put this together was you, you mentioned collective momentum. And it sounds to me like everything that you've just been sharing is really an expression of that idea. So I, I'd love to, to have you just to expand on, you know, what is collective momentum and, and how do relationships have a compounding effect that generate that? And how does it weave into the ambassador club? Sure. Well, collective momentum is is first and for, foremost, you can just break it up into collective, right? That's multiple people and momentum is just moving forward. So, or, or maintaining forward movement. Collective momentum is kind of, the, it has two components. One is what we used to call reflective residence, which is if you have a group of people, uh, it's it's a metro. Have you you know if you take a, two metronomes and you you eventually they synchronize. Mm -hmm. uh, humans do the same thing. So if you have a group of people of sound principle, when one of them starts to spin out, get overly euphoric or overly fearful, it the the gravity of the group tends to pull them back to sobriety. Now it does. You, you see, you've seen a riot, right? Like it also works against you. You need to have a group of sound people because we all as individuals have our moments where we're just irrational and euphoric and in a honeymoon phase or an extreme irrational fear. Uh, and, and if we're around the right people, it'll pull us back to sobriety quicker. Now people don't like to hear it because it's not sexy, but the best way to maintain momentum in the right direction is to spend less time distracted going in the wrong direction. And that's the most powerful thing. A community of people, in my opinion, is not designed to like 
slingshot you somewhere else, you know, like to slingshot you into the next stratosphere of success. The right group of people is going to prevent you from going off the rails and losing six months, a year, three months, five months, doing something stupid that leads to a divorce, you know, like all those things that destroy momentum. So that that's the first one is it just pulls you back to a state of sobriety. But then you have this collective wisdom and how many times for Scott and everybody listening or watching, how many times have you been, you know, oh yeah, I just can't figure this thing out. And somebody you've known for like 10 years is like, oh, I can solve that. And first you're like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Thank God I have these people around me. But then it's like, wow, I could have solved this way sooner had I just had a place to say this is what I'm struggling with, like, or if I told you. And so there, there's two components, which is one, having people around, you could solve problems quicker. Uh, people know people, people have solutions, people think differently, you know? Uh, but then having a structure like the ambassador club where it's like, hey, this is where you can go and it's appropriate. It's not, you know, maybe you feel bad going to Thanksgiving dinner and being selfish and asking for help. But this is a place where you go to ask for help. And the the collective momentum, it's just, hey, look, everybody is just kind of trying to stay centered in a, in a state of sobriety and moving forward. And it's not always, it's not the same direction. Everybody's got their own priorities. But that that's the 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 idea of collective momentum. And then the last one is we all know our success rate goes up. You ever, uh, for those of you that work out, had a had a gym partner and you're like, God, did you not want to go today? And they're like, come on, let's go. And you're like, ah, oh, crap, okay. And then other days they're sitting there going, thinking, I don't want to go today. And you're like, come on, we're going. And there's days where you both don't want to go, but neither one of you wants to, you know, like as soon as the other person says, I don't want to go, you're like, shit, I have to be the one. Okay. Now, if you don't have that workout buddy or you don't have a group of people expecting you to be there, you probably won't go. So there's accountability piece. There's like a doing stuff together increases the likelihood that you're successful. And so all of that makes up the concept of uh, collective momentum. Yeah, I love that you highlighted. So collective momentum can work in either direction. If you are associated with too many of the wrong people, it will pull you further away from the things that you actually want. And if you can, oftentimes we can improve the quality of our relationships just by pruning <laughs> the relationships that really don't serve us. Or, and, and, you know, I, when I say that, I, you know, some people say, well, I can't, I can't cut off members of my family that are not supportive or encouraging and so forth. It's like, yeah, but you do get to decide how much of your time, energy, and attention is invested in those people and their opinion about you. And you can reallocate that time, attention, and energy into relationships that will get you closer to what you want, associating with more of the right people and affiliating yourself with people, to your point, that will get you to go to the gym on the days that you don't really feel like it, and who you, in turn, will will encourage to go to the gym on the days that they don't feel like it. Well, I feel like in just this short conversation, we've covered a lot of what the Ambassador Club intends to be about and who it's for, why it exists, and where it's going. Nick, is there any anything else about this endeavor that you would like people to know about before we wrap up? Uh, nothing to know about, but I do have a suggestion, or I just want to take a moment to encourage people that there's this weird thing that happens. And I don't know how to explain it. I've just observed it many, many times. If you come into the Ambassador Club, you're hanging around the Ambassador Club, be respectful. That's one. But have fun. It's like people have like this, oh, I have to deliver value and be educational over here. And like that is not, if, if you're really close, you don't get with your best friends and the people that you, you like to be with the most and like, guys, let's sit around and study and be serious. You, you actually make some of the most progress as a human in the times when you're like driving around with a top down, goofing around with your friends. Like that, that's where the, when you're engaging the field, but you're not just engaging the field with work, everything you do, all your experiences. And for some reason, this like educational space, which is what a lot of our publications are, is like people 
turn off the fun part of their brain and they learn a lot less because of it. So I just encourage people to have fun. Now be respectful, you know, being disrespectful and uh, inappropriate and uh, offensive is not fun. I mean, it might be fun for you, but that you're just not our kind of person, but there are uh, share laughs, you know, uh, get together, meet each other, go do crazy stuff. You'll learn more quality of life will go up and, and you'll, you'll be able to better tap into the and benefit from the collective momentum. Yeah, really well said. There are plenty of places on the internet where you can go elevate and elevate yourself by putting down other people. And this is definitely not that kind of place where this is a place where you elevate yourself by elevating others. And I'm really excited about continuing to develop this uh, project and I really appreciate your invitation, Nick, to, to get it started and deeply appreciate the, the, the time and the insight that you provided uh, for us today. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to the Ambassador Club. We'll do some fun stuff. All right. Remember, it's supposed to be fun. All right, everybody. We'll see you on the next episode.